I start with this speed mobs hurdle because of the crowds back at Cheltenham, which is brilliant to see. I didn't go myself this year. I went in for the only time I've gone in four days, 2016 was brilliant. It's just so expensive accommodation. Tickets are a bit expensive. I said instead of a video, the only group of graded race I've not gone to is the new Liberty, and that's a mass chase at the Cheltenham Festival. I'll try and do that next year. But of course, the here winning this Supreme Master's Hurdle brilliantly by 22 lengths from John Bond, who might be better over the long term. Uh, Kill who did a decent enough race in the third place. He won obviously well last, his last race, having been a bit disappointed before that after running well of a bumper the year before. Dice at Dynamo, just maybe too keen, and that just won't help you jumping at all at Cheltenham. But as I said after another brilliant performance from appreciated last year's Supreme Master's Hurdle, I'm not sure where you go necessarily. Now, of course, Hill has an advantage here. He's only five. Appreciated it was seven. And I said in my video last year, and I'm getting a little bit of comment here, I'm the audio, I'm going to do up maybe a champion hurdle, that there's problems with the whole seven year old going forwards. And probably because Houston Hill, even though he's five, amazingly, I think it's at least 1946, and probably, there's a good chance earlier, I don't know about earlier. Since that year, only one Supreme Master's Hurdle winner has gone on to win next year's Champion Hurdle. That was Bueller, who won the 70 Supreme Master's Hurdle, and therefore was 70, uh, won an actually 72 as well, Champion Hurdles. Uh, Hola Loire and Brave Vinca won both races, but there was a gap for Hola Loire, who was placed in 2000, and came second. In the 2007 Hurdle, Ben Barron wouldn't miss the back, so maybe there was no hope in winning there, but he was only just second. And of course, 2001 was abandoned at Champion Festival, and he then won in 2002, in, and again. In a way, it's a tragedy of, of Larry Mick slipping up and probably would have won, I would have thought. And Mr. Buck obviously in the past his best and being pulled up early on. And the other one was Brave Inca, who was placed in a very close battle between how to use his and himself before winning the next year. A decent champion, maybe not the best. So, what's your tale? Where's he go? I'm not sure. I just question it. He may be brilliant, and he is, and apparently, it's got time for him now. But power of the highest rated ever novice hurdler ahead of the. Uh, Ill-fated, brilliant Golden Signet, one of the 78 stairs, uh, sorry, 78 Supreme Officers by uh, Count Easley and was really challenging uh, a great sea pigeon in the uh, Scottish Champion Hurdle as a novice, a bit tragically falling off a final flight and, and basically being killed. So will Constitution Hill challenge Sunday Circle next year's Champion Hurdle? I don't know. Well, I mean, it's a good chance a horse will go there. I wouldn't necessarily want to say, t say take the horse on, but you've got to bear in mind that Supreme Officers is not been the greatest trial basically for the champion hurdle so we'll see for that one move to the arkle ever so winning winning well whether it's a greatest race i don't know an uh, eight-year-old certainly an old horse to the arkle i think 20, i may just look with something now i think both sides of europe and moscow fly were eight years old in the arkle in the past it's usually for younger horses bag this really and i just wonder whether he'll be good enough for next for anything next year at top at uh, say the top table it's just checking here. Yes, Moscow Fly and Size Unit last two eight year olds to win the champion of the, the Arkle. Uh, before that, you know, Commandante didn't do much. You know, Knight he didn't do much, frankly. And the Danish Flight and Nine year old and eight eight he didn't do much either. And then you've got Boring Prince, Bob's Line, and then, and then the Overton, who actually back in 78, you know, who was Everton, the Arkle, and the Gold Cup. So, but, uh, but uh, I've got some doubts he'll be good enough next year. Depends on who turns up champion chase. He looks a really good champion chase this year. Certainly with Shiskin and Energomain. Possibly Tuckin Paswa if he comes back to some sort of form and gets his eyes from in, in, in at Cheltenham. So it was a good performance, of course, from uh, Edward Stone. And and, and uh, just Alan King winner for about, I think, was six years at the Cheltenham Festival. His uh, first favourite, I was saying, for even longer than that. So it was impressive. Kind of like an interesting one. Well, with second, it was actually supplemented for the race. So it was a good call that 25 to 1 to have to do that. Was, my horse, a brave scent. My horse, baby, sees the cat. I'm not quite sure he pronounced the horse, to be honest. G going okay, actually, when it fell. But before the fourth, fourth, can't say much about that one, really. I had to the first one. I didn't start. I meant to say, first horse I had, uh, had Constitution Hill. I think, meant, uh, unfortunately, the only winner I had today of a year was a pick one horse per race. And the first thing was the only one who actually won. So I was too late to know, know what, what happened. In the Ultima, of course, you call the Festival Trophy Handicap Chase. Car Crambler coming from my mile behind. I mean, absolutely, we're down there at Fox. <laughs> Look, absolutely nowhere. I came flying through a bit like a Dundrois did. I think it's 2006. Through a race like that. Uh, Richard Lyman also, who certainly didn't jump well. <laughs> anyways, he, it does seem 2009. He came from somewhere for a pace. That's mainly because his jumping wasn't very good that day. He might somehow, oh, uh, AP McCoy got him up to a win. There's a great performance for Lucinda Russell and uh, Peter Scudamore. Looking, Scudamore looking, uh, looking pretty, uh, uh, 
so you're being on the TV. I mean, I was school, I like school as a, as a sort of pundit. I always seemed a bit nervous when he was doing it after riding. And he seems very com- confident he used to be, and I think. I say he got some weight now. He got some weight to. He was told by his partner, Lucinda the Russell, that he actually was weight to, to ride the horse or horse in work. So it's quite well, I'm a good performance from a horse winning that right one. Uh, my horse, I think, might still be out there actually. My other vintage clouds. Uh, to take a six time one of the race it's an amazing thing I thought it might be worth maybe find some we won it last year but he's never really going I've pulled up quite some way out in the end Champion Hurdles only settled brilliant performance again Wonder Mare unbeaten one of the great hurdlers I think of all time frankly now with a, it's, I'm not sure the golden edge quite for hurdling but it's really an impressive performance from her Again, a bit time to coming back to some sort of form. I mean, a bit of a lean two years. I was actually fighting fifth last December, where she dead heated in, 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 in that race. And I, I just come back to form. It's only uh, again, come back to some sort of form that's going to do the race. My old sound warrior on well. In fact, at uh, 33 to 1 there, didn't quite get placed. Oh, well, second thought, Mike scrubbed into places. Glory Fortune, rather crabs the form. They're not so sleepy as well. Both wank outside is one really decent race, actually. Appreciate it just seemed well. I said in my, I said earlier on in this video, and I said last year, I wonder where appreciate it would go. I thought it's too old for the champion hurdle, potentially too old for anything, too, too in chasing. And what do you do with it? We've appreciated it really. Uh, maybe she'll go on the stairs hurdle, I don't know. First uh, season debut, and people thought, I think Mullins, he's done that greatly before, of course, like Q Vega and Penn Hill to come for a season re- reappearance uh, to win at the uh, with uh, Q Vega winning the Mayor's uh, Nicholson hurdle and uh, Penn Hill winning the Stayers hurdle. But I appreciate it, whether or not, I just didn't win well enough, frankly, and I don't know what happens to a horse, really. I, I just a disappointing performance bluntly in the end. I mean, maybe, it, it, of course, it was up to the pace. And that may have, you know, so maybe one better than it looks, but it's, it's got to be a bit of a disappointment there. To Hupu, who was a sort of talking us to an extent there, very disappointing indeed, really. And are we looking here, just looking at the results from Express website, and Gordon Elliott has said that, the, that in fact, a, a, a going just was didn't suit the horse. Uh, he said it was officially good to softy, so, and he was just, uh, no, Elliott saying he's. He, he would prefer a softer surface, and frankly, therefore saying it's probably towards good ground, really, I think, there. Mercer and Marie's Rock, uh, good enough performance of a horse. But when they're known to Henderson, who's had to of course, he's been up totally off form. <laughs> I don't follow racing that carefully or to, 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 over time. I tend to look at the major meetings, and really, I've got a couple of years of Channel, well, I've seen Channel 4, <laughs> ITV racing, I've not gone through yet, over the, over the uh, TV coverage. So, but I do tend to complete your form, and suddenly he's on his own form now. Uh, class comes to a top end, it's a brilliant record at the Channel Festival. I think the long one, my, what I would do when he retires, he's already 71, I think, now, is we name a Johnny Henderson uh, uh, Grand Annual, as a Henderson's Grand Annual after him and his dad. So, because Queen's Book second, Mr. Mirror running, uh, it was Grand Rare, well, Festival before the third. Uh, my horse indefatigable was actually I thought it was struggling a bit. Then one went, went quite well, and I was going on. I just might been involved. Went stayed on very well. We might have hurdle a couple of years back to win that. And then I thought, oh, I've got four that thing. I went oh, for looking there because oh my god, look at grief. As Temmie Summing Girl who was going well. I was brought down to a horrible forefront. I think Temmie Summing Girl looks so was okay. Sadly, of course, the horse died in the opening, in the first race. That was of course I don't meant to say that actually. Actually, I uh, shall have one more. Very sad news that horse had to be put down. But yes, Tim Simpson goes going well, I think, and uh, I was unlucky. And I think maybe a little luck there for Marie's walk to win the race. Fred Winter, Brazil, uh, uh, Brazil deserved that race. Just edging the short bus hot block Gaelic Warrior. And uh, Brazil uh, was t- lost a lot of ground at the uh, one about the second, where Gaelic Warrior jumped going violently out to the white right there. And if you Brazil had won, right, he won most unlucky horses, I think, with Channel Festival, frankly. And luckily, did we just turn over Gaelic Warrior by a short head? And it'd be completely, it's a completely deserved win that, because uh, Gaelic Warrior basically didn't run straight. And I think, I can't say you can't disqualify a horse for that, or what a horse is doing, just jumping a bit, a bit off, off, a bit too much of a white. But really, uh, I'm pleased that Warrior didn't win it, actually, because I think she, she completely. Horse completely uh, inconvenienced Brazil, and look at Brazil got there. Uh, my horse, oh, is it? Oh, his side a midfield ran away. Didn't work, but never really see. It came from back and went on a bit, but but nothing much to say there. And then for the National Challenge Cup, uh, very sad on the C6 one this year. One rank outside of oh, actually, didn't one, but beat the bullet. Didn't one that bad a race, and actually managed to beat 
two of the horses, in fact, who are short priced. But start the one on well. So we'll see what happens there. Galvin, of course, for some connections, won the race last year, and he's just about favourite for a Gold Cup. So start low. Will he be turning up to that sort of level? I don't know. We'll find out next year, basically. One with well, Fred, uh, one wide Fred running okay. Uh, but at this point, only see six runners in this race. I'm when people. I'm not sure what the future really is for the race. It's one dad four miles, three miles, six. I think there might be a slight overreaction to them. Maybe pull widening a few years back, and we knocked it down to three miles six from what is always used to be called the four miler, and now it's sort of the three mile six furlonger. But one race I think might have no hope of the well, future is a, I mean, it's a good Miller chase. That's a real response to that. Now, four two mile four, uh, novice chase, running one on uh, early on, I think, first race on Thursday. I don't know if you need that race. I'm not 100% sure you need the Ballymore anymore. I'm not sure. So I might do a video I meant to do. I know just a video recently on History of Turtle Festival Races, which I'm, I'll link to now. I may as well do. <laughs> i got this video. Uh, and the Richards and just do that as part of looking into the... looking at how a three-day festival would work. I personally prefer four-day one. I don't... And not five days. I think that's a mistake. Definitely. And if you're older, I'd have four days. Then, if not that, three days and then five days. But I think that's just. I just do not think that's the right idea. But it's a good military. So I think maybe shouldn't shouldn't be there. But I just want. I don't mind the amateur races. And you got. I mean, uh, Patrick Mullins, Jamie Cod. I was a few years back. I was very critical. A couple of races of Patrick Mullins. But he's a good jockey. You've got Jamie called Derek O'Connor, the first three home, and then, yeah, they could be make a living as professionals, frankly. So it's just amateur racing name only. We sadly to only see six runners here. But you're both 101 running a, running a big race. I have no actual opinion on this at all. In fact, I'm actually looking for silly ones. Hang on, I actually did actually chip Stackler. I actually forgot. Because uh, only two to only two to one. So I forgot to two up the first seven. I actually forgot I tipped off. But he wasn't always had a strong view on, frankly. I think it's annoying. We only got six runners. It's difficult. But that should be it. We got obviously major races tomorrow. Champion chase. Really looking forward to Shisky and Ogre Main and Chuck and Bossoir. I uh, by the way, I haven't put a tip up yet. Uh, of a video for that yet. Political are going for political. I know, eleven year old. Basically, need to get the walking stick. I think it was last year. The horse was pulled out. I think it was back in then as well. Uh, just before the race. I think it was that. Well, I think he wanted to, he must have done it, because I think he won in 2020, I think. I'm trying to remember getting old. I turned 50 last week, so <laughs> I'm getting old. I think it was 2020 won the race. Uh, and then last year, he got, he got, he picked a injury, which is literally just before the race starts. So I said, we're realizing, well, it may start going off. And, oh, that's pretty long. That's a, a few, literally a few quid on him. Uh, oh, he's been, must have something else to happen. So we'll see. But he's a rank out, even more rank outside, 80 or to 1, but to 50 and 80 to 1 tomorrow. tomorrow. But it's nice to see the crowds back. I see the anti TV covered lots of the last two races on through the Pony Power website through Racing TV. Uh be a bit more difficult in the next few days because I've got a, some events that's in Phil, a very good interesting organisation in Central Newcastle as well. I'm from at six o'clock on thir Wednesday, Thursday. I might I should just about be able to get a metro from a house in Desmond down there after 5.30, down for six after 5.30 races. Bumper will take long. I can't see. Footwalk Kimmy will take a bit longer. I think that's the last race on Thursday. I should be okay for getting to those two events. Shouldn't be too but I'd have to make a decision on that, maybe. Maybe what's the last race in town instead. Friday's more difficult. I have to join the town earlier because I've got a fence at the Great Museum of the North. The old, if you know Newcastle, your Hancock Museum at 5.45. It's literally impossible for me to actually get down from my house. So I'll have to watch the last two races or two from in town. That's for later on.